Welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a quick look inside of this original iMac G3, uh, inspect the board for any leaking caps. We're going to repaste the CPU and change out the PRAM battery. All you need to do in order to get inside to pull out the uh, tray is to remove this one screw by the rear handle on the bottom. Once that's removed, you can grab the handle and give it a tug upwards. That should come right off. And then you have two screws to remove at the top of the motherboard tray. Once those are removed, you can unscrew the uh, thumb screws from the VGA connector. And then you can remove the power cables that are also going to the motherboard tray. Then you'll grab the handle at the top of the tray and pull it straight forward. And that's all there is to it to pull the board out. Now we're going to remove the plastic cover over the PRAM battery. Then we'll pop that battery out. and insert a new one. Then you'll replace the plastic tray back over top of it. I'm gonna pop this RAM stick out, just wanted to take a look at it. It's not too often you see a 128 megabyte stick of SD RAM in an original iMac G3. By the part number on it, it starts with AAP, um, so I'm guessing it's an actual Apple certified RAM stick from back when this machine was new. To remove the heat sink, you're going to pop the little retainer there from the right hand side, and then in the heat sink just pops right off. To remove the CPU, you can use the heat sink retainer and lightly pry at the back. That'll pop it right out. And then you can see on the back there, there's the original 32 megabytes of SD RAM that came in the systems. Go ahead and pop the CPU back down since the caps underneath are in good shape. Now we're going to scrub all of this old thermal compound off of the heat sink. Uh, it's not a paste, it seems like some kind of graphic com graphite compound. Took quite a bit of scrubbing to get it off. It usually does. I've done this on a couple other models. Now we'll take an alcohol swab to the CPU die itself. Get any residual compound off of there.
Now we'll add the tiniest dab of thermal paste to the die itself. Don't need much at all here. Very little clearance between the die and the heat sink. Then we'll put the uh, heat sink back on, put its retaining back up back on. And we'll replace that RAM module that we had removed earlier. Some of these older machines, little plastic clips on the sides of the RAM modules are a little bit weak. So I always like just to push them in just to make sure it's all the way in. That way if the RAM pops up, you don't have to pull the whole machine back apart again. Now it takes some fiddling to get the tray back in. Uh, you want to make sure you get the uh, optical drive lined up in the front. Sometimes it sits back too far. Once you have that slid in, you'll just reinsert the screws, all the cables, and tighten them down. Then you can put the plastic cover on. This is a little bit fiddly as well. But eventually you get it to snap in. Uh, these cables have to be just in the right spot. And then you'll replace the screw at the top. Typically you'd also replace the port cover door there on the side, um, but this one is missing that. Let's power it on here and make sure everything's working. All the RAM is recognized. The flashing you're seeing on the CRT monitor is not actually there. It's just not synced with the refresh rate of the camera. Boot it up here, we'll get in and check the RAM, and there it sees it all. And hard drive and everything's recognized. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for future videos. Have a great day.